into the 2020-2021 Conejo Valley Unified School District's Focus on the Arts program. This exciting arts adventure is funded by two grants from generous partners, including Access Arts, an initiative of TO Arts, along with Conejo Schools Foundation. Have fun, and remember, you can work at your own pace. Don't forget to use that pause button. And this is family fun for the whole family, so gather everyone around and you can all work together. And if you don't have the materials, you can improvise. That means use what you got. And no matter what, remember, even though we're apart, we're connected by art. Hi, I'm Anu from Art Makes You Smart. And I'm Julie. You may be noticing the bright, vibrant colors in our studio today. That's because we're going to be talking about a very colorful cultural holiday known as Dia de los Muertos. It's also known as the Day of the Dead. If you're not familiar with this holiday, it might be because it's normally celebrated in Spanish-speaking countries like Mexico and those of Central America. It's a holiday where we celebrate those who have passed on and welcome their spirits back to the living for 24 hours. Take a look at the following video and look for words like ofrenda, cemetery, parade, lanterns, and marigolds. Dia de los Muertos is a holiday enriched with beautiful color, tradition, and is very meaningful to those who celebrate it. It takes place every year from October 30th to November 2nd. During this time, people celebrate the life of loved ones who have passed on. Their souls or spirits are invited back to the living world for a brief moment in time. It's up to the living to make those spirits feel welcomed and loved during their visit. Dia de los Muertos, otherwise known as Dia de Muerto, or Day of the Dead, is celebrated all over the world as people have grown to understand its meaning. But the holiday originated in Mexico, long before Mexico was even a country. The Aztecs who inhabited the land of Mexico are the first known to have celebrated Dia de Muerto. The tradition has continued all these years in Mexico and neighboring countries in Central America. For some, it may be hard to understand how to celebrate the life of a loved one who has passed on because it is a very sad time. But Dia de Muerto helps us to understand that there is a circle of life. And when you can understand that, it is easier to celebrate the life of a loved one. It is also a great way to honor those from previous generations who passed long ago, like a great grandma, for instance. We all know that living things all must die eventually, but it is comforting to know that a soul or a spirit can continue on. Join us now in a journey about Dia de los Muertos. Let's learn about some of its traditions. Let's start at home with the ofrenda. The ofrenda is created as a place to honor and welcome those who have passed. A photo or photos are placed on the ofrenda along with some things to help welcome the spirit when it arrives. The four elements, air, fire, water, and earth are represented in ofrendas. Cut paper decorations called papel picado represent air. Marigold flowers represent earth. Pitchers of water or a bottled beverage representing water are available for the soul since it's had such a long journey and candles for fire light the way for the spirit to return. Pandemarto is a sweet bread decorated with dough shaped like bones. It, along with other favorite foods, are on the ofrenda. Ofrendas just don't happen at home. They can be in public spaces too, like this statue of Frida Kahlo and Diego Rivera two very famous Mexican artists who lived some time ago. Papel picado, which can be found in ofrendas, are beautiful papers with designs cut out of them. Papel picado translates to punched paper. The laces designs allow airflow for the spirit to be able to pass through. To make them, artists use stacks of bright tissue paper and chisels to punch out the intricate designs. Papel picado can also be found decorating streets and alleys during the holiday. 
Sugar skulls are a big part of Dia de Muerto too. They have colorful designs which often include flowers. They represent the departed soul and can have their name across the forehead. This honors their return. Sugar skulls are indeed a skull made out of sugar. But because their designs are so fun, sugar skulls are also popular as cookies, ceramics, and all kinds of art forms. The flower you will see used most often during the holiday is the marigold. They are used in ofrendas, cemeteries, and the marigold bridge. Marigolds can be found in markets when the time is close for Dia de Muerto. When an ofrenda is created at home, marigolds are placed all around it. It is the spicy smell of the marigold that is used to attract the soul to come back to the living world. To get back to the living world, the soul needs a way. The marigold bridge is an imaginary way that the soul travels back. In the living world, you will see paths of marigolds and their petals leading the way. In cemeteries, the marigolds are there creating paths, decorating the grave of the departed, and even made into shapes that celebrate the things the departed love to do. Like this person, who obviously liked to bicycle and eat fruit. Cemeteries become beautiful places to visit, and on Dia de Muerto, it is a place where people will gather and play music and games and enjoy food. Flowers, lanterns, and ofrendas at the gravesite create a magical feeling. The cemetery is such a big part of the celebration that it can be the destination for a Dia de Muerto parade with musicians and people in costume. In large cities, such as Mexico City, it is truly a festival. You can find people dressed as skeletons, dancers, acrobats, and more. And decorations pop up all around town too. Dia de los Muertos is truly a special holiday to those who celebrate it. All of the interesting traditions and bright, beautiful colors make it a wonderful way to honor those who have passed and will be for generations to come. Check out these fun, colorful banners. They are simple to create and bring bright colors into your home. We made these with coffee filters, crayons, markers, and water. Are you ready to make some of your own? Get these supplies ready. Five coffee filters, markers or crayons, and something to hang them on, like string, twine, yarn, or even an old shoelace or two. If you have washable markers and want the blended effect, you will also need water and a brush. To get started with the banners, we are going to show you how to do a marker example and a crayon example. Here are some banners we created. Look at the designs and see how they all follow the shape of the coffee filter. This one we made first with washable markers and then added water to make the pattern spread into new designs. And finally, this banner is made with permanent markers. Okay, get those supplies ready. Once you have your supplies in place, you are ready to go. Start by folding your coffee filter in half. Line up the edges and get a good crease. See how the coffee filter is now a half circle? Our designs are based off a smaller half circle here. Take a look and find that small semicircle in the center of the coffee filter. With the crayons, we will show you how to make a flower. With the markers, we will show you how to create a pattern design based on a semicircle. For the center of the flower, outline the semicircle with your color of choice and fill. Add any details you want. Remember to hold the filter flat and tight with your other hand. If you want to create a design instead of the flower, start with some of the half circle shapes like we have here. Fill with color and pattern. Okay, the outer part of the coffee filter will be for flower petals or designs. Here we're drawing petals like this all around the center half circle. Fill them in with any colors you like. You can also add patterns. Filling in all the way to the edge really shows off the petals, make them nice and big. You can also go ahead 
and fill around the outside of the petals with color. This way you have a full colorful coffee filter. Makes for a really nice banner. For the other design, we looked at the filter and saw some wavy folds. Then we drew our blue lines along those wavy folds. You can create any kind of lines you want here, or patterns too. And of course, keep it colorful. Now that you're done with your washable markers, add water and watch your markers spread. It is so fun to watch. In fact, even when you're done adding your water, the markers still keep spreading. Be sure to check that out when you do it at home. If you have permanent markers, if you add water, they will not spread. They will keep their design. Now that you know how to create your banner pieces, go ahead and make all five of them. When you have all your filters done, and dry if need be, you can glue them onto whatever you have to make a banner. We used yarn. Cut a piece long enough for your five filters. Open up the filter, use liquid glue, and lay down a line of glue on either side of the fold. Keep it close to the fold though. Press it together over the yarn. Glue the rest of your filters and you have a colorful banner for Dia de Muerto or any other holiday. We hope you enjoyed making those colorful banners. Now we're gonna do the next project. We're gonna make these beautiful sugar skulls. The supplies you will need are white construction paper and crayons. If you have watercolor paper too, save that for the next project. The construction paper will feel smoother than the watercolor paper. The way we will draw the skull is by first drawing a large circle to almost fill the page. And then we'll add a large U shape below for the jaw. And then a mouth. And then we will draw light lines to help us find where to place the eyes. We are going to want our sugar skulls to be symmetrical. That means they will look the same on either side of the center line. See how these two sides match? That is a traditional feature of a sugar skull. Okay, here are some design ideas. You can of course do whatever you want, but see how we use symmetry in each skull. Let's get started. We have pre-drawn some of the skull with marker so you can see the steps. But please use a pencil for this step. Draw your circle and draw the U. Any size U will do. Add a smile for the mouth. We will add teeth later. Erase the lines on the side of the mouth. Now get your crayons and decide what color you want to use to outline your entire skull. You can also outline the mouth. Now using your pencil, draw two very light lines like we did here. They don't have to be dotted, just very light. First draw the up and down line, the vertical line. Draw the side by side line or the horizontal line at about the center point of the vertical line. All right, now draw the eyes so that the horizontal line is in the middle of them. It doesn't have to be perfect. You can either do it in crayon or pencil and then go over in crayon. All right, now that you have your eyes placed, erase the guidelines and you can draw your nose in between the eyes and mouth, any shape you want. You can be creative. Now for the fun part, adding your designs. Noses can have decorations in the middle and around the edge. So can the eyes. Do them however you want. Add flowers, dots, whatever comes to mind. Also add a design in the center of the forehead. To keep things symmetrical, add designs on the cheekbones and on either side of the skull. Remember to keep them the same on either side. You can add any kind of design you want to the chin it can be flower, leaves, or just shapes. Just remember that it should be symmetrical too. Then go ahead and fill in your skull with fun, colorful designs. Hang it up for Dia de Muerto. 
Drawing sugar skulls is so much fun that we want to show you one more way that you can make one. This time, we used a black permanent marker, like a Sharpie. The black crayon would work too. Be careful not to use a washable black marker. It will bleed all over your design. We created the design that is like a coloring book, so it can be filled in with color. For the color, we used watercolors. Finally, we will show you how to create this colorful background with watercolors as well. You might want to use a pencil to draw the skull. First draw a large dome shape. Add bump outs like the letter C on either side as shown. Connect the bump outs with a large U. Now draw very light guidelines dividing the skull in half both ways as shown. These will help you keep your skull designs symmetrical. This means that your designs will be the same on either side. Outline your skull with the Sharpie. Do not go over your guidelines with the Sharpie. Draw the eyes any shape, but draw them so that they are centered on the guideline. And make sure they are big enough to fill with designs. So in this case, the bigger the better. Add an open mouth so you can fill it with teeth. and add a nose. Now, start to fill your skull with designs. We mentioned before that you will be filling these designs with watercolor, so draw them like a coloring book. Leave room inside the shape so you can add color. Remember to use the guidelines to keep your designs symmetrical. You want them to look the same on either side of the lines. Get creative and have some fun with this step. Okay, time for watercolor. For this step, it is a good idea to not use too much water. It is so much easier to control watercolor if it's not too wet for these kinds of designs. You can always add more water if you need to. As you continue on, you will find a balance between how much water and how much paint to use. Helpful watercolor hint number one. Use the tip of your brush and just the tip. If you mash your brush into the water cup or into the watercolors, it will be really hard to control your brush and the watercolors too. So keep that tip nice and pointy. Helpful watercolor tip number two. Jump around the page like a grasshopper. If you color in the center of a flower, for instance, stop. Don't fill in the petals. Instead, jump around. Go to a design somewhere else on the skull. Come back to the flower after the center has dried and finished the petals. Keep doing this jumping around as much as you can and your watercolors won't bleed together. Helpful watercolor tip number three. When you get little puddles of paint, like Anu does here in the eyes, use those puddles as paint. You don't need to go back to the watercolors every time. Sometimes you have enough paint on your paper to use, especially to fill in little spaces like these eyes. Once you've completed your designs, you can move on to the background. For this, we will use a different technique called wet on wet. First, wet a section of the page with water, then add the paint. In this case, we want the paint to spread. It will give an opposite effect than the way you painted the skull. So it'll make the background to the skull very different. Keep doing this all around your skull you can use as many colors as you want. Just be careful not to go over the skull's edge. We hope you enjoyed this lesson today. Don't forget to hang up your skull after it dries.